Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Um, we're shooting out there with the people that we got, and um, obviously they're disappointed in themselves. And we still got a lot of basketball left, seven games left. But for the guys that came out tonight, they fought um, Anthony Leo and Trey Galloway. And Anthony not playing and coming in and starting and doing what he did, playing as hard as he could. Same with Trey Galloway, playing almost the whole game until he fouled out. Um, it's just, that's toughness in my opinion. And I feel like as a group, we're together. And those other guys are going to come back hungry and they're going to do the right thing next time. The guys, the guys, the guys willing who, to kind of what elaborate on it, just what, what just to what extent that you're willing to elaborate on it. What is your first thought? What is your reaction when coach says we're going to be down five guys tonight? We're kind of scrapping what we've been working on. Well, obviously you're disappointed in the circumstances, but at the same time, you still got a game that you got to play. And the guys that were out there tonight, they, they did their thing. But and the guys that did the wrong thing and were doing what they did, um, they were still cheering for us. They were still there for us. Um, they were trying to be good teammates. So um, that's all you can do. What, what, what did those guys say, Trace, as far as, like, you know, what did they say to you guys who didn't make a mistake, who were able to play? Obviously, they no. I would just, <laughs> they didn't help. I would you know, no comment. Okay. Trace, in regards to the game itself, though, you guys had plenty of opportunities. Uh, a, lead, a lead again at, at halftime, uh, just unable to finish it out. Just, just how frustrating was that that you guys were in this game right to the end? Um, I just think at the end of the day, um, with the circumstances, I think we just ran out of gas towards the end of the game. Um, we were playing as hard as we could. Um, a lot of shots started to get short, and then at the, that's what happened. So um, dead legs, um, no subs. So we got to just hit adversity, and then we just couldn't pull this one out. It really Dun turned the whole Dustin, and then I'll bring Trey. In. I asked to ask about Trey. I mean, he talked about what it took for him to play all those minutes. What it take for him to just you know, not learn how to play point guard, but kind of learn how to play point guard in this man of the day to get to that position. I think Trey played really well this game. I mean, he showed his toughness, his grit. I think he came off ball screens really well, got downhill. He played really, really good defense. And for a position that he hasn't really necessarily played in, I thought he did a great job. And he's just going to keep working and building from there. That's true. All right. Let me get Trey in here. Just to start, to what extent you're willing what led to the decision to suspend those five players and what was basically the process for you as the head coach of going through I guess that decision-making process and determining that that was the necessary punishment. Well, I'm not going to give you all of the in-house in things. They broke rules, and they were punished for it. And, you know, if we're going to be a team, and you set rules that guys got to obey by it as a team, then that's what you got to do. You got to... Do all the necessary things to help you, your team win on and off the floor. It just doesn't start on the floor. You gotta, you gotta do all the necessary things off the floor as well. So that's where we are. Yeah. Well, what is your level of concern about this general like player leadership that in the second week of February, make an NCAA tournament push, five guys do something to get themselves suspended? No. Well, again. We have rules, and when you obey the rules, things got to happen. And those guys were not it. I wasn't going to let them play today. So we got to go back home and regroup and get ready for Michigan State. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, Coach, can you speak to the duration? Is this just a one-game thing? And then secondly, uh, Trey Galloway and his effort today, what did you think about him being pressed on the point and what he gave you before fouling out? I don't know if it's a one-game thing or not. i, I got to make that decision if that's something I want to do when I'm heading home tonight. But I thought Trey Galloway played his butt off. I thought all the guys who played tonight played extremely well. Unfortunately, their teammates let them down by doing the things they've done. So we got to regroup as a team and start getting ready for Michigan State. Mark. Coach, how, how much time did you have to prepare for this particular group of guys to play tonight? Just today. You know, when we went to shoot around this morning. That's when I was able to prepare a little bit. And I thought, for the most part, we played our butts off. And uh, I just think the fatigue set in because I just couldn't go anywhere else with our ball club. And, and you got to give Northwestern credit. They played their butts off the second half. Sure. Mike. 
personally as a head coach of Indiana University, how disappointed are you? I'm very disappointed because I'm strictly about team. And those guys in the locker room know I'm very upset about it. So we'll regroup. You know, it's my job to get them ready. And we'll regroup and bounce back. Tom. Mike, why were they dressed and why were they on the bench? Because they're still on our ball club. They're still a part of our team. They weren't deserving of playing tonight. Justin. To go back to the preparation plan, I mean, how did you how did you prepare Trey in particular uh, for getting used to the point guard? I mean, how much work had he done with that? What did you have to do to get him ready? Well, he hasn't played much point for us, hasn't played him, but he handles the ball adequately enough to be able to, you know, to get the ball up the floor and get us in sets. And I just think that the fact that he didn't have a relief tonight, you know, fatigue started to set in and just didn't have much coming down the home stretch. Plus, he got in foul trouble, a couple of fouls that they called on him. I don't know if they were fouls or not, but they they made the calls and he ended up fouling out. So, I mean, but I thought he played well while he was on the floor. Last question, Matt. I guess kind of on, on the other end um, of the bench, how do you kind of, given just the one day to prepare, how do you get some of the walk-ons prepared at the, at the very end to say, hey, like, we might need you today, especially. Well, I mean, the walk-ons are a big part of our, our team as well. You know, I try to treat them the same as I treat guys that are on scholarship. I mean, you know, they're they're part of the family and they're they're valuable as well. They they go through practice every day and and put up with me and the staff. So, you know, I felt good. I just didn't go to them. I kind of limited it. I thought if I got in foul trouble, I had to use them. I would have used them. And, um, but we stuck with what we had until the end. And But again, I couldn't be more proud of a group of guys that they played their lives off. Last question, Joe. How big of a missed opportunity is this as far as NCAA tournament resume goes? Well, again, I'm, 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 I'm looking at it as doing the right thing for our university and our team. You talk about building a team. I'm, I'm building a culture here. I'm not here to, to mess around with guys that don't want to do what's asked of them. And if they don't, then they got to go. You know, that's how I look at it. I'm going to bring players in here that want to be proud, wear their uniform proudly. That's what it's all about. Do all the necessary things on and off the court. It's not hard to do that. All right, Coach, thank you.